morning and it is off the press, the program where we take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it and dissect it as much as we can. And with me to do so in the studio this morning is Dr. Femi Duwa Digoke, who is a public affairs analyst, and Ifi, who is a policy analyst. Ifi, good, morning. Good, morning. good morning. Good to good morning. have you. Ifi Oji without the R. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and OJI. And OJI. Okay, so, so yeah. uh, we have a couple of papers to take a look at this morning, uh, but we'll begin with the Nation newspaper. And the Nation newspaper says, I'm sure it will be displayed shortly, Lau and others mourn as Senator dies at 75, grassroots man healed. That story is on page seven page 8 rather of the nation newspaper displayed there. Buhari raises hope for Leah Sharibu's release on page 43. It says war on Boko Haram on. Akonde leads APC panel on reconciliation. Edo government excited. That story is also on page 7 of the nation newspaper. And the big story for the nation newspaper is Southwest governors to sign a Motekun bill on Friday. Just at the top of that it uh, Adoke gets 50 million naira bill after mm -hmm. rearrangement and Oyo suspends 13 teachers on page 41 and 42 of the Nation newspaper. And then we have um, 30 burnt to death by Boko Haram in Borno attack on the front page there. But this continued on page 7. And ECOWAS pushes for reopening of Nigeria's borders on page 43. And we have EFCC arrest FBI suspect on page four. And then we have a picture story that is displayed there of the wreckage of the scene of Boko Haram's attack in Borno. This is just yesterday. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's all we have here on the Nation newspaper. Let me begin with the gentleman and lady in the studio. Which of the stories is catching your attention, Dr. Femi? Let me begin with you. Well, um... I was, yes, on <laughs> Okay. Finally, the uh, the southwestern state governors are going. They're doing the right thing, even though they put the cart before the horse. Mm. But right now, they're putting the bill to their various house of uh, assemblies, and uh, Governor Fayemi has promised that by Friday this week, the bill should be uh, passed mm -hmm. by various states and then the next step will be taken. But I have a question for the governors, which is on Dear the lips... governors, leaf, listen. Yeah, which is on the lips of everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from having the legal backing, the modus operandi, we don't know yet, then who are the people the that The part we, of what they said is that the, the yeah, specifics we know. will yeah, be entered. What will be the... Because some states are saying they've started recruitment, some have said they have not. There's... Uh, there is a... Conf uh, what is it? What, so what are you concerned about there's no harmony in terms of... No, no, no. It's not about the harmony. It's the kind and type of people that will be employed for this security outfit. Okay. Because I read in this story where the governor of Oshun State is saying this, their own harm will be domiciled in the local government and recruitment will be done by local government chairman mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, traditional rulers. I think Dr. Femi has a very important, makes a very important mm -hmm. point. At the end of the day, the eligibility criteria mm -hmm. for the, how, you, how they are recruited is the most important thing. But at the end of the day, if there is no integration within the different states mm -hmm. on how to, uh, to recruit these, uh, par well, as far as I'm concerned, paramilitary <laughs> uh, individuals, you know, we run the risk of the problems they have in the north, yeah. they have in other Muslim, st in Muslim states, for example, where you find people that feel like everything is hopeless and they yeah. have no hope. Turn to violence yeah. and unbeknownst to them, unwittingly turn, turn this, turn this uh, well-meaning uh, idea mm -hmm. into a paramilitary mm -hmm. and... Yeah, yeah. So, th so that's one of the things I think uh, I, would, I would definitely agree with Dr. Mm -hmm. Femi on. It's just a question of we need to get those modalities right yes. from the onset. The modalities. Yes. yes. All right. Okay, so let's move away from that story. And if you, which other story would you uh, like to take a look I at? I mean, border, border is always a very important thing. We, even with this coronavirus mm -hmm. and just knowing that this world is becoming a global uh, village. Village. Yeah. So I understand uh, the, the reasons why ECOWAS is raising a red flag to um, closed borders in Nigeria. Yeah, but they are actually pushing for reopening. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the reason is, is very, very simple. It, it actually goes against what, uh, what we signed under the um, African Continental Region Agreement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. under which uh, ECOWAS also falls under with, with the uh, African Union. And that agreement 
specifically states that we are going to be borderless at the time the instrument of ratification for that agreement is put forward. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, sorry, it's deposited. So the fact that we have the borders closed is actually, I, I thought, I, I actually thought that it was just a test run in mm -hmm. terms of trying to jumpstart the process for uh, increasing our capacity uh, for small and medium enterprises to mm -hmm. ensure that they are able to stand on their feet in time for the border um, when the borders are opening but we'll just have to wait and see mm -hmm. where we fall in in the next because uh, just like uh, couple you know, of months just like other things we don't seem to have a clear uh, date as at when would this open because we realized that um, sometime last year when it started we had sometime in December there's going to be opening of the you know, December pass I and mean, then we'll ultimately, go to January. Ultimately what, what, what will really determine whether or not we're taking seriously is the fact if, if this border OM reopening mm -hmm. falls in line with the uh, running of the, uh, the, the after okay. agreement. Okay. Yeah. So if it, if it runs after, if, it, if the border continues to remain closed mm -hmm. to after the agreement has been fully put in place and we're at the final phase of the uh, implementation of that agreement, then we run the risk of uh, sanctions mm. from other um, member states yeah. that have signed that particular treaty or sorry agreement. Mm. That's really so. important that you're raising <clears throat> that because it's, it, we, we seem to be covered in a maze of things and not paying attention to some to of these the implications. Yes. Now let's talk about Boko Haram. Again, <clears throat> 30 burnt to death by Boko Haram in Borno and this is just yesterday. Yeah. The mm -hmm. president, as we know, is in Addis for the AU summit yeah. and one of the things he said is the fact that he made assurances in fact from ministers, which is also in this uh, paper that yeah. um, all those who are held, held in captivity by terrorists would be re re uh, released. Yeah. And he added in the same breath that um, that's, they're, they're working tirelessly, so to speak, to, to conquer, let me, for lack of a better word, Boko Haram. But just yesterday, yeah. we are seeing this. What's going on? What are we not getting it right? It begs the question. Sunday night stroke yesterday morning. So, because in Meduguri, I think um, there's a process in Meduguri now where the, the gate is shut, gate to the town is shut at a certain time. Hmm. So I guess most some of this... So, some sort of curfew? Yes. So I think the gate was shut on some people. They came late, so the gate wasn't open. And in the middle of the night, the Boko Haram came and... Um, so, but if they know, I mean, if... You know, it's, it's a guerrilla warfare. Hmm. So what they do now... Uh, Boko Haram is the, uh, the federal government from what we've seen and what we've heard. They are fighting the Boko Haram on all fronts because we got um, the de delivery of some aircraft, mm -hmm. uh, war aircraft, and they, some have been deployed. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not a conventional war. About 10 of them. Yeah, it's not yeah. a conventional war. So Boko Haram, they're going to look for uh, a means just to show that they were still existing. Mm. And I think that's what they've done over the night. So I think there should be more security uh, presence in such places because we know it's the Northeast that's their main stronghold. Uh, stronghold and that's their target to put fear in the people. Look at 30 people were burnt. I saw it last night, it was a gory sight. Mm. All right, we'll move on in the interest of time. Uh, unfortunate story there. Let's take a look at this day uh, newspaper. It would be displayed. And the, the, on the front page, ECOWAS raises community, committee on closure of Nigeria's land borders, which yeah. we already talked about. Nigeria re reiterates objection to unilateral adoption of eco-currency. Yeah. That story is on the front page, continued on page 8. And electronic payment transaction hits 151 trillion naira on page 5 of this day newspaper. Anxiety in Biosa's Supreme Court delivers judgment on governorship. Uh, gov Primaries. That story is on page six. And Buhari condemns attack on Boko Haram, which kills a 30 in Borno. Says federal government is determined to frustrate bids to hold Nigeria to ransom. Military Meduguri Damatru Road now closes by 4 p.m. How are people supposed to, you know, yeah, go about operate, their. So, you know, yeah. It's actually quite troubling. It is 4 p.m. For I mean, some. I mean, go ahead. I was going to say, for some people, 4 p.m. life is just about starting. Even some <laughs> yeah. businesses, really. And about, you know, that, you know. Because for that region, mm -hmm. there is a, it's like um, a war-torn zone. So certain businesses, may, anyways, yeah. may not... You might hold. not even open at all, or you might close early. Mm -hmm. And I just feel the military needs to do more. And that is why we've been clamoring for more community policing. policing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right. If you were you going to say something, and we can just continue. No, we can continue. I just okay. want to. I mean, I, I just I agree with what Dr. Femi has said. Mm. Yeah. All right. Asu opens talks with uh, federal government over 2009 pact and IPP, IPPIS blames state governors uh, governments for insecurity. I think that's the only story that is different. Uh, Amotaku law ready in southwest states uh, by February the 14th. Yeah. They chose uh, Valentine's Day. That's what they say. <laughs> no, there was something called the Valentine's Day massacre as well. Don't forget. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Uh, so can we talk about this ASU? I know it's your favorite topic. Well, we're still talking about ASU and IPPI. Even the way you're smiling, <laughs> you're very, very... Yeah, I've not read this story, but because of what I know in the yes. past, I, I just feel even ASU mm -hmm. and the federal government... They're ready to talk now. They need to talk on time. Mm. And I've always said it, we need to become a process system. Mm. ASU cannot say to federal government, that they want to do things on their own because as a federal government who pays mm -hmm. their salary. Mm -hmm. And if I if you work for me, except state universities mm -hmm. who are being governed by the state. Mm -hmm. But if a federal university and the federal government says this is how I want to mm -hmm. this is the process you I want to, to have accountability. I want to be able to monitor what is going in and what is coming out. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't from the onset I don't think Hasso has a case. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if we want to see transparency, my own point is we let it trickle down in other forms of government, not yeah. just, you know. Yeah, but we need to do it somewhere yeah. first, then we are replicate. And roll it yeah. Yeah. I agree, I agree okay. with you now. Yeah. Okay, so let's move to the Vanguard newspaper. Uh, it would be displayed. Amotekun bill becomes law February 14th, according to Fayemi. That story is on page 11. Uh, rumble in army over pay disparity yeah. with yeah. Navy and Air Force on page 41. Again, there's a story on ECOWAS challenging the uh, border closure and 30 killed, the same story is the Boko Haram attack. But the picture story, uh, if you just scroll down a bit, uh, you'll be able to see the level of destruction uh, from that attack yesterday, a couple of cars that were burnt. And of course, we heard that 30 people were burnt. Thank you very much, that's already displayed there. Uh, that's almost like someone's building or whatever structure it is that is uh, completely raised down there, unfortunately. Now, ex-EFCC boss Farida Waziri sacked in national interest, according to Jonathan. That story is on page nine. You want to find out what it is about. And um, 1.4 candidates registered for UTME direct entry yeah. in three weeks. That's according to JAM. Do we have the capacity? And h how are these, you know, how do they manage this level of... Um, intakes and do, they, do we end up having quality or it's just about quantity will be relevant questions. So let's take a look. Um, this story, this paper almost has everything that we've discussed except for the yeah, army. Yeah. Well, I've not read the story, but I heard on the news yesterday that the army are raising foul play that the Air Force and the Navy, I don't know which one of get get more pay mm -hmm. than the other and the other ones are complaining now. They want to be at Correct. par. Are they? So, are, are they the same? I mean. Um, I mean, it, as in, um, in army, in navy, and air force, mm -hmm. within the same ranks. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a belief that some, either the navy or the air force, gets more than what the army gets. Sure. Well, I can imagine why that would be the case, especially with the spotlight that has been yeah. uh, put on regarding our national security. Mm -hmm. yeah. People are now sort of you know, really looking in fine detail yeah. and doing the analysis of whether or not these uh, these particular organizations uh, are right really it. doing what they're supposed to be yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. So I can understand why the, this, uh, this this is just a fall. It's just a fallback of what uh, has been earlier discussed. Okay. Above all, we want uh, to see deli service delivery. Uh, <laughs> if this amounts to good yeah, but, security but, and but if they are not properly remunerated, cared for, I welfare, hear I hear that. Then you find well. out that they will go out there and they will compromise. Mm, I hear mm. that also. Anyways, uh, in the interest of time, we'll take the Punch newspaper, which is the final one for the day. We have sports, but we may not. Uh, the Punch newspaper has displayed already. Nigeria earned 1.17 trillion naira from VAT in 2019, according to the CBN on page 27. Community policing, IG meets South East governors on Wednesday, and police begin screening on page 2. Uh, a federal government electricity workers meet to avert strike on page 29. And six Southwest governors may sign a Mutekum bill on Friday, page 13, according to Akira Dolu. That uh, story is on page 13 of the Punch newspaper. A federal government raises panel for Mambila Power Project execution on page 29. Secondos, PDP ESCO in court over alleged contempt on page 40 of the Punch newspaper. 
The big story for Punch is 87% Nigeria's poverty rate in North, according to World Bank. Atiku blames insecurity, lack of education for epidemic, uh, endemic poverty, rather. And Northern youths uh, say leaders grabbing power without development. Again, uh, we see the story, picture story from Boko Haram's uh, attack yesterday in Maduguri. On page 26, you find that full story. But he also spends 13 head teachers and others over illegal fees on page 18. And Ilaro Poli, SUG president, caught during initiation, suspended and impeached on pages 4 and 5. Akonde replaces Lawan as APC uh, Peace Panel Chair. Ify, do you want to talk about? Yes, I will talk about I, the, I know uh, we'll the talk elephant about in it. the room. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, so, so World Bank uh, brought out a publication, I think it was based on the, some st statistics or studies that they had, I think it was 2018, mm -hmm. and they basically pin-targeted pin, pin, pin the, the North North as the concentrated area of, of poverty in Nigeria. And uh, I don't know why this has made the front cover mm -hmm. because I know this is something we already know. Even, yeah. even right back to where I was going to we say, were, are we surprised? We are not surprised. Mm -hmm. So back, even right, looking at the 2019 uh, general election, and we are looking at the figures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at the figures of general election, we know that the the majority from even a plur plur plurality system mm -hmm. of them um, for voting, we could see that most of the figures and numbers are coming from the north. So we yeah. know that there is a high concentration of of, of new um, poor people, for lack mm. of a better word, in the north. Yeah. So I, and I don't really think it's necessarily okay. So yes, so for planning purposes, it's good to know these figures so we can plan. So if China can do it and India can do it, so can we. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, I think that's where we are going to wrap it. So can we? And I want to say thank you, Dr. Femi, You're and thank you, Ifi, as always Thanks, for obliging us. And we'll call it a wrap here on Off the Press. We'll do this again tomorrow, same time here on Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okoye saying, have yourselves a great day.